Welcome back everyone, Ethan here from Game Changer. Today we are going to finish the final piece of your Space Duel game, the power-ups. Let's get started right away. Let's go to Add Actor and click on Media Library. We are going to add three different power-ups. The first one is an orange gift, which is under Winter, and it's pretty close to the top. So let's click on Orange Gift. And that's the first power-up that we're going to use. We can resize it a little bit if we want. And let's pick our next power-up. And this one is going to be under Sci-Fi. It is going to be the green power cell. Let's click on that. In a minute, I'll get to what these actually do, but let's just add the last one as well. Click on Add Actor and go to the Media Library again. The last power-up that we are going to use is the battery and we can also resize that since it's a little bit big. The first thing that we are going to do is make the gift move. Let's drag in an on start, and after that, we are going to make it start above the screen where you cannot see it. So let's drag in a go to, and let's go X zero and Y 450. This will be just above the screen, about right here, in the middle. And once we start the game, which is when the screen is clicked, so we'll wait until the screen is clicked. Same thing as last time, wait until mouse down. And once that happens, we will move the gift forever. And that uses a forever block. So let's drag that in. And since we're moving the gift down, let's go to motion, since that's going to make the gift move. Drag in a change Y by and set it to negative three. This can actually be any number as long as there's a minus in front of it, because that will make it move down. So if we just play the game, you can see that when we click the screen, it will move down and it'll exit on the bottom. But we also want to make it so that once it exits the bottom, it loops back to the top. To do this, we are going to check if the Y position, which is the distance up and down, is less than negative 450, which means it's completely outside of the bottom of the screen. So if we click on Control and drag in an If False Then block, and then go to Operators, and drag in less than. After that, let's go to motion, find Y position, and in the second bubble, put negative 450. This will check if the gift's position up and down is less than negative 450. And if it is, then we're gonna wait a random amount of time and then put it back to the top of the screen. Go to control and drag in a wait block. After that, let's drag in go to. And for later, we're actually going to hide the gift when the bullet touches it. So we need to make sure that when it enters the top of the screen again, we actually show the gift. So let's drag in a show block. Now to actually make it pick a random number, we need to go to operators. Find pick random one to 10. We are going to wait a random amount of time and we also don't want it to be placed in the center of the screen when it loops around every time. So let's drag a random block into the X position, which controls how far left or right the gift will go. Let's wait any time from one to five seconds, and let's put X position negative 250 to 250, and Y position 450, which if you remember, that's above the screen. So it'll place it anywhere up here, and then since this is in a forever block, it will go back to the beginning. Let's play our game. You can see that the gift exited through the bottom and it came in again after a few seconds. We're going to do the same thing for both the green power cell and the battery. Let's copy the exact same code to the battery and the green power cell. But one thing we're gonna do differently is we're going to make the green power cell move up. So we're going to start this below the screen 
and we are going to change it by 2 pixels instead of negative 3. This will make it go up and move a little bit slower. And instead of checking if the green power cell is outside of the bottom of the screen, we need to check if it is outside the top of the screen. So we're going to remove the less than block and drag in greater than. And this one, we're going to check if the Y position is greater than 450, which means if it's higher up than the outside of the top of the screen. We'll do the same thing, we'll wait some time. And after that, we want it to go below the screen before it goes up again. So we'll use negative 450. Once we play the game this time, you can see all of our power-ups are moving. But all of the power-ups start moving at the same time. To change this, let's just copy the wait random 1 through 5 seconds and put that right after the mouse down. Do this for all three power-ups. The first power up that we are going to code is the orange gift. What this is going to do is change the size of the bullets, so we need to create variables for both bullet sizes. Let's go to create variable, and we are going to do it for all actors because we want the bullet speed to be for all bullets, not just one specific clone. And let's also make a variable for bullet 2 size. The reason we aren't resetting these on stop is so that we can change the value that they start at later. Now that we have those variables, we need to make something happen when bullet one touches the orange gift. So let's go to events, drag in a when occurs, and also find the sensing block and change it from touching mouse pointer to touching the orange gift. If you need some time to pause and follow along, go ahead and pause the video. But the next thing that we are going to do is broadcast another event for when the bullet touches the gift. Let's find the broadcast block under events and we are going to broadcast touch gift 1 because player 1's bullet is touching the gift. The next thing that we are going to do is change the bullet size while it's moving. So let's go to looks and scroll down and find set size to 100%. 100% is its normal size so we're going to make it bigger, something like 250%. We're also going to add a sound. So I'm going to go to sounds and drag in a play sound block. Now I already added the sound effect to this actor and it's going to be space jump. Finally, we are going to change the bullet size variable so that future clones of the bullet will also start out big because you hit the power up. So let's go to variables and drag in a set block and we are going to set the bullet size of bullet 1 to 250. Or what you can do is go to looks and actually find size. This will set the bullet 1 size for future bullets to the size that you just set up here. In this case, it'll be 250 for us. The next thing that we want to do is make it so that the power up lasts a certain amount of time. So when the bullet touches the orange gift, we want the original object to wait 8 seconds and then reset the size to 100. Let's drag in when I receive and let's choose touch gift 1. The reason you can't just put it in the clones is because once the clone goes off the screen, the clone will be destroyed before it can reset the size. So when we use this broadcast block, the original object, which will never be destroyed, picks it up. Let's find the wait block, and let's change it to whatever time you want. For me, it's 8 seconds. And once you've gotten that time, we're going to go to variables, and set bullet 1 size back to 100. One more thing you want to do is copy this and drag it to on start because when we start the game, we want it to be 100. Now this can be a different number if you want, but for me, it's just going to stay as 100. And the last thing we have to do is change the clones code so that it sets size to whatever it's supposed to be. So under looks, 
we can find set size one more time and drag that into clone startup. And what we're going to do now is go to variables and find bullet one size and drag that in. Once you have all of that, we can copy the code to bullet two. Over here, you can see most of the stuff can stay the same, but we are going to need to change all of the player one references to player two. When the game starts, we are going to set bullet two size to 100. When the clone is created, we are going to set size to bullet two size instead of bullet one. And the broadcast events will be gift two instead of gift one because it's player two hitting the gift. Finally, let's actually make the gift hide itself when either of the bullets touch it. Let's go to events and drag in when I receive twice. One will be for player one and one will be for player two. And when either of the player's bullets hit it, we are going to hide the gift. Scroll down and find hide and this can go in both of them. You should be able to see that when the bullet hits the gift, it should grow bigger and future clones of the bullet should also be bigger in the next few seconds. So just like that, the bullet power up is working. You can see after some time, it also got smaller because that eight second timer ran out. Now that we're done with that, let's code the battery. So the battery is going to make the bullets go faster instead of making them larger. It's going to be a very similar process for detecting the collisions and hiding the gift. So let's just do that real quick. We are going to create a couple more variables again, and this time it'll be for bullet one speed and bullet two speed. This will be for all actors again, and we won't reset it on stop. Instead of controlling the bullet by just moving it by a certain amount each time, we're going to control it with this variable. So let's drag in bullet one speed here and bullet two speed here. After that, we're going to make sure that it has a speed on start. And you might have noticed that it was a little bit slow when we last played the game. So let's set bullet two speed to something like 10. And let's also do the same thing for bullet one. The next thing that we are going to do is add the collision. And we're going to do something very similar to the orange gift. In fact, we can actually just copy and paste this right here. And instead of touching the orange gift, we're gonna touch the battery. Instead of broadcasting touch gift, we're going to do touch battery one. And for this one, we actually won't need to change the size, so we can drag that away. We're also going to play the space jump sound, unless you want to do a different sound, which is totally cool as well. And lastly, we are going to set bullet one speed to something faster. You know, it starts as 10, so let's do something like 16. Remove size and enter 16. And I'll make this one last five seconds, so we're going to do something very similar to the orange gift once again, except instead of touching the gift, we're touching the battery. Instead of waiting eight seconds, we'll wait five seconds. And we're going to set the speed back to 10 instead of changing the size again. After this is done, we can copy this code to bullet two. Should be at the bottom over here. And once again, change everything to match player two. So change battery one to battery two and change bullet one speed to bullet two speed. And you can already see we set bullet two speed over here. And one more thing that we have to do is go to the battery and make sure that it hides itself when either of the bullets bump into it. Now that we're done with that, the bullets and the battery power up should work well. You can see the bullet goes faster after it hits the battery. And a few seconds later, it should slow back down. 
As you can see, it's back to normal speed. The last power up that we are going to code is the green power cell. And what this one does is it changes the ship's speed. So this is actually going to be very similar to the battery power up, which changes the bullet speed. What we're going to do first is once again, create a couple more variables for the ship's speed. So let's do player one speed and player two speed, both for all actors so that the ship can actually read it when the bullet hits the gift. And we're not going to reset this one on stop either. And one more for player two speed. What we are going to do with this now is go to player one and player two, and you can see they're moving up and down by one pixel right now. So that's actually going to be the speed. So going up is going to be changing Y by the speed and going down, we're actually going to multiply the speed by negative one. And what this does is put the minus sign in front of it so that it goes down. And we need to have it start with the speed. And I think the ship's speed are both a little bit slow right now as well. So I'm going to start it as three. And this will be for player one speed. Now, if we play the game, you should see that player one's is a little bit faster now than player two's. And we are going to do the same thing with player two. We are going to go to variables and drag in player two speed for both change y's. And we are also going to multiply one of them by minus one so that the player still goes down, just like we did for player one. And also, we are going to set the speed to three when the game starts. Now that we can control the speed with a variable, we can change that variable when the bullets touch the power cells. Just like we did with the battery, we can copy and paste that, and we can do it two times. The first thing we're going to change is make sure that it happens when the bullet touches the power cell. And then we are going to broadcast a different event. We're go I'm going to call it touch cell one. And we're also going to play space jump. And instead of changing the bullet speed, we are going to change the player speed to something like six. This is currently double the ship's normal speed because we set it to six when it normally is three. And the last thing we want to do is also reset it after five seconds or so. You can have whatever time you want here, but for me, I'm going to keep it as five as well. After that, we reset player one's speed back to three. Let's copy the code to bullet two. And let's change everything where there's a one and change the one to a two. And the final thing we have to do for our game is go to power cell green and make it hide when the bullet touches it. So go to events and just like the other two power ups, we can find a when I receive block. Drag in two of those and change it to touch cell one and touch cell two. And for both of these, we are going to hide the actor. And that's what this show block was for. So after the bullet touches it and it loops around the screen, we are going to show it so that it doesn't disappear forever. And just like that, your whole space duel game should be done. You can see the players move a little bit faster now, and the gifts should work pretty well. When I hit the battery, the bullet goes faster, the orange gift makes the bullet grow bigger for some time, and the green power cell will make the ship move faster. Congratulations! You've made it to the end of the game. Have some fun changing the speed of the ships, speed of the bullets, or even add your own power-ups. With whatever you can come up with, the sky is the limit. And with that, see you in our next game.